coming up in today's episode. You've ever been as a woman in a hardware store and ever felt like everyone treats you like you either are lost, you don't know what you're looking for. They feel sorry for you. you. They feel sorry for you that there's not a man around to help you. They instantly need to help you do something. Like, I feel like you can relate to this. So I I asked somebody to come over and I was like, I need a piece of that plywood, but it's up too high. Would you be able to get it down for me? And he was like, what are you building? Do you know what that's used for? And I was like, oh my God, here we go. He lo- He was like, do you know how much it is? And I'm like, are oh. you saying that I can't afford this piece of plywood? Sometimes, and I face this more than once, they want me to describe the job to them, but they want to discuss the money with my husband. So I share my renovation projects online through my social media at Exo McKenna and my website, exomckenna.com. And I am so excited to relaunch my new website later this year, which I am building on Squarespace. And Squarespace is an online platform where you can design a beautiful website to showcase your business, share your ideas and content through blogging and or sell anything, products, the content you create, and even your time. So check out squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial and start building your website. And then when you're ready to launch, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Because I'm always shopping online for a variety of things, home decor, project supplies, clothing, makeup, and I love a good deal. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey doesn't just work on desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Getting Honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor when shopping online. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash DIY. That's joinhoney.com slash DIY. Every plate is America. America's best value meal kit offering 26 tasty and affordable recipes to choose from every week. Their meals are 25% cheaper than grocery shopping and 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. Get $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code XO49. That's just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code XO49. Thank you to Every Plate for sponsoring this episode. Hi, Kins. Mom is currently going over notes for this episode uh, right now because when I told her the idea for this episode, the face that she made was so crazy and i'm like save it for the podcast save it for the podcast so i had um, a friend actually gave me this idea to talk about what it's like being women in a male dominated industry now i feel like uh interior design is not a male dominated industry i would say no at all um it's very mixed of all kinds you know Mm -hmm. um but construction building is very much a male dominated industry I think across the board, do you know of a market or a place or a state where that's less that? Like, no, but nobody told us. Well, no. I mean, I just like just, happened upon like, yeah. I really like to do this type yeah. of stuff myself. So it never really occurred to me that this was a male dominated. I mean, obviously you see men in construction hats working on <laughs> like buildings and building buildings, but like, ah, we've just been through some situations where it's made it very evident that we are um, not the majority uh, gender or so when it comes to being in this type of industry. And it's been interesting. So when I mentioned it to mom, she the face that she made was so amazing. And I had actually never asked her, you know, how did guys like treat you when, you know, you were coming on site when you guys were building, you know, how many, how many builds have you done now? Uh, a lot, a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, and enough times eight, to nine. eight or nine. So it, enough times to go through a, 
eight or nine times of situations with different tradesmen and different subcontractors, like yeah. having a lot of people um, and being in a lot of different situations. So I asked her and she had immediately I could see like uh, rage <laughs> about situations that she had remembered that she was in. So I figured we could talk about it because I feel like there are ways that we've overcome it or had to deal with it yeah. or <laughs> just some tolerate it, tolerate it yeah. or work around it just to get things done or get what we wanted. And, um, it, it's very interesting. So I've definitely had my own experiences with having tradesmen here working and different contractors working and how I've been treated by them. I've actually, uh, good and bad. I'm not saying that we're not sitting here saying that all of no. <laughs> I told her, I was like, are we going to just sit down and talk about crap about men? <laughs> No, 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 we're not doing that. Um, just for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the majority are re- very wonderful. But there's just been and- instances, even like if you've ever been as a woman in a hardware store, a home improvement store, and ever felt like everyone treats you like you either are lost, you don't know what you're looking for. They feel sorry for you. you. They feel sorry for you that yeah. there's not a man around to help you. They instantly need to help you do something. Like, I feel like you can relate to this. I feel like if, you, if all of us, like we've, we've done our own projects, you have gone to the hardware store, <laughs> you know? Like there has been instances like that. I have made a few mistakes by going to the hardware store and it's certain attire that I will get into. Um, but let, let's just get into it. Like I asked mom, what was the one thing that came to mind? One instance that came to mind that just like gave you that face when I asked you, like w- what was your experience being on site, on a construction site? And being treatment, treated a certain way, wh- however way, good well, or bad. I think th- the one that stood out for me when you asked me <laughs> the, that the face? was the face was about the windows. The windows? The windows in the house on the hill that I'm in now. The windows. What happened with they the They came in wrong. They had, okay. there were a, a lot of the windows that were sitting on the slab. Yeah, all the they, literally the on the floor. Right. Yeah. And they had to cut the bottom off that was normally would sit on the window seal, they had to cut that part off to be able to anchor them into the slab. Well, that was all fine and good off the ones that were going to sit on the slab. They, the company, cut it off of all of my windows. Oh, no, yeah, not all of them sit on all the of ground them like that. Have, no, the, there were a lot that went into, like, window seals yeah. a foot or two foot off the ground. So... When they came in, which we waited a very long time, we ordered our windows the day we signed the contract for the house to be built. And because you kind of have to, the lead mm-hmm. times on windows and are long. Are yes. long. The windows specifically are very, very long. Yes, it was then, and it is now. Yeah. And so we we had windows we couldn't use. So the builder, they called them and they said that they were going to just nail them into the screw them in well so like screw them into the frame of the wood if right they, sat they were going to put a piece of wood i see anyway they were going to finagle it yeah. to where they would screw them in well to a piece of wood well the wood over time and everything would shrink and and the it, it, it wouldn't last because the uh screws would be the wood would swell and get with temperature changes and i would have leaks so these were going on window seals you see that yeah. the bottom was cut. This, the actual sealant for the water was cut off to keep it from leaking. So my builder actually went to bat for me and said, no, 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 no. These aren't, we have to redo them. So instead of putting the windows ahead of everybody else because they did them wrong, they put me behind everybody else. Why would they do that? Well, they didn't tell me they were doing that at the time, but it put us on you have to be you have to have the windows to be able to go advance with the house with the sheetrock you yeah because your house in. has to be dried in exactly so that it actually protects the next stages of the build so the windows and being dried in having your exterior up is like so it, it, it's vital it's the only mm-hmm. way to move forward right so we had to get them in well when I, I waited we waited finally when I got to talk to the head guy he said that fiesta was coming up something in san antonio that everybody oh yeah they take off yeah for for, yeah a couple or three weeks 
And so that was coming up. It was a bunch of things. Like holiday holiday things coming up. up. And it was just a nightmare. And we were three months out on the windows. And that was, yeah, that was unacceptable to me. And it's slow. Everything stopped at the build for three months. And he came down from Dallas to talk with me. The owner of the window company? Yes, because I was going to take all the windows out of the house and put them on the cul-de-sac and he could come and pick them up because they were made wrong. Oh, she said, snap. (laughs) She said, you can go and pick up your windows. I'm putting them on the street. (laughs) Yeah, because unfortunately for him, I hadn't paid for them yet. Oh! I had just put a deposit Love down, for us. which covered for the windows that actually worked. That were all so all the, the ones slab. that were wrong. You were putting yeah, on they could come get at the street. Okay, yes. so he was flying down to see. I you. said, send a truck. Yeah, the I w- are don't blame you. Yeah, that. and I'll get my windows from somewhere else. Yeah, and they'll be made right because I'm not going to rig this up to where I have problems later. Yeah. So he flew down, and his right hand man flew down. And they were going to meet with my builder and then the head of my contract, the contractor that was head of my particular job, me and my husband. Well, my husband was, couldn't, your dad couldn't make it that day. He was doing in Houston. And we were there on the cul-de-sac. We were waiting for your dad to get there. And they told me that in his words were, he would rather wait until my husband got there so that he would explain it all to my husband and then he could explain it to him in a way that I could understand. Oh my. I'm just saying. Did you kill him? Is he alive right now? I, <laughs> We're saying that like. I, my builder and the, <gasps> the, the job head of my job, they both took a step back. Oh my. And I turned to him and I, 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 I just looked at him. I just, I couldn't believe, I was just absorbing what he had said. <gasps> and I'd be hiding behind the house. I told him, I said, well, you let me ha- know how that works out for you and all of your meeting that you're fixing to have. And when you decide to figure out what you are going to do and where we go from there, you give me a call and I'll let you know what you are and are not going to do. And I turned and went in the house. Well, the so-called house with the windows. I, I mean, I can't believe that's all you said to him. I did, and I left. And so they were like, "Well, well, your dad, your dad got there, and it was like, what did what did y'all decide? What did she say?" And everybody was, "Well, she she didn't say anything. We hadn't talked to her. We were waiting for you." And he said, "Oh, buddy, you made a mistake." Oh, yeah. He said, "Yeah." And so I, in in not so polite terms, told them that everyone there was working for me. And that they were going to take their windows back and they were going to put me at the head of the line and I was going to get my windows. Even with that, it took another six weeks to get the windows. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, still still the time to actually do them. Yes. Is, but is I did inevitable. get put to the top of the line. But yeah. it was it was just, that was his first, he didn't even look at me. He didn't even, he introduced himself. He dismissed himself. you. He dismissed me from the get-go. Yeah. He didn't know that I had drew the house plan and had been there every day and knew had, had and was running like very much like I feel like we haven't ever explained like the dynamic of how my mom and dad work very much in unison but my mom is like the handler like she runs the show my dad yeah. of course is involved makes I feel like he has a portion of I feel like he always does the exterior and you always do the interior sometimes in some like I feel like they yeah. share a lot but my mom is the communicator. My mom is the you know. <laughs> well, your dad ran a company with like five secretaries. So he's he delegates. He he does. Yeah, he's a great yeah. delegator, but you're not a secretary. <laughs> No, no. I had a marriage life. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like he's he's very much like a, they make a decision together, but my mom is really the one to like move it forward with the the contractor, handle the build, everybody. handle it, handle like be like the controller of what's happening. Acting like a contractor right. of your own house. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's just hilarious that she was dismissed. Yeah. Before. I I didn't even hardly say anything, but hello. And he dismissed me. Yeah. We don't know where this has come from. You know what I mean? Like, obviously we can think about like society, like from the past, but where does it come from? Like, why have they experienced a lot on a job 
um, dealing with women or with the wives and always ha- maybe having to repeat themselves to so the hut, like the dynamic, yeah. it, is it more common to deal with a man? Probably. Like, you know, like uh, there, it's obviously been developed. It's a, it's a thing that is too widely known. Now, I think that it is changing. I feel like what you have experienced in the last 20 years of building or more, 30, your first house you built when you were 23. So 40 years, 40 years of building, obviously I'm going to be I think it's a, a slightly more common to see a woman in right, this space yeah. for sure. Yeah, so I feel, was, yeah, uh, this, phenomenal. that was, yeah, it exactly. Was crazy. So we don't know where it's come from or where it started from or stems from, but this is just the reality of what we've experienced. And for someone to dismiss you and not even know the dynamic, he could have asked you, you know, like, or could have known something from the builder or just not, just not been a mean and really had about it you know like that's just rude who dismisses anyone who who would say something like that like when i'm gonna explain it here yeah he can explain it he can explain it to you in a way that you can understand you would never say that to someone no ever no and i but i i was dumbfounded i i didn't know what to say i just looked at him like yeah well, I, you handled it very calmly. I would have I scratched did. his eyes out. I no, said, I wouldn't well, have. When, 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 <laughs> I talk a big game, but I'm not. No, no, you I'm too never. nice. <laughs> I might. You would never. I might. Yeah. But it's like, wait a minute. When you when you want to know what you're going to do, then you call me and I'll tell you. Exactly. But I'm going to go in my house right now. Yeah, I'm not going to waste I, my time with you right now. By the bottom line, I needed my windows. You, but you do have to, yeah. Yes. You can't. I think too is like as women we uh, I think we both think ahead like okay yes. is this going to negatively impact me getting my windows? Yes. <gasps> what is our end? What name? is our end goal? Should I <laughs> yes. not piss this guy off right now, or is it worth it? Yes. You know, like you you kind of have to play that yeah that field of when it's worth it to kind of go all in just like standing your ground but we don't let our egos or anything get in the way no. so to speak um which is why and, i had to walk in the house yeah, oh, yeah. wow had to, yeah. i've had a similar especially like with with dad i've had a similar situation um here at the cottage and i don't i i feel like i've blacked out a little bit of it but a tradesman came to look at something and I think it was something with the electrical or the pl- I think it maybe it was the plumbing not a plumber but I don't know something had happened and he came and we got to talking like he was talking very layman's terms of course I know a lot more than the average Joe when it comes to construction and building and how a home works and what I would need but I don't really lead with that I don't really like I know a lot so you don't need to talk to me like I don't like I you know, I just let whoever it is talk and say whatever they need to say. So he came and I think we got to talking and I think he knew who my dad was or because this is a small town. My parents are obviously kind of well known if if they've been, you know, like around building and stuff. He flat out looked at me and he goes, well, maybe your dad can come down and I can explain to him what needs to be done. And <laughs> I, I don't know why I laugh. And- <laughs> I was like, my dad won't be coming anywhere. That's literally why I said, I'm like, what? I was like, no, you can explain it to me. Like, and as nice as I I am a very, like think about how I affect people and I am nice. I'm, and I think my mom can, like if I'm pushed to a certain point, I might not be so nice. I, are you gonna? Yeah. Well, I am just, I'm not someone that's going to get railroaded or run all over. I can protect my own. And I think in a, um, you know, being a, like a businesswoman or someone that wanted to grow the ranks in a corporate world and, you know, do a work like this where you are going up against strong personalities, I think you would have to be someone that can stand their ground. So on camera and like in regular life, I'm this sweet, bubbly, happy human. If I need something done, don't be fooled. <laughs> yeah, you can cut to the chase. I can cut to the chase really quickly and get stuff done. And my voice does lower just like that. And I get really serious and I'm not going to get You get very calm and very determined. I do. And everything kind of just. The world kind of slow, just like it did just now yeah. with me talking like, I kind of just go down to the basis and I get, my my voice gets lower and I said, I'll say things like, look, I need this done. I'm going to pay the original amount that we discussed. 
I need it done by Friday or I'm going to have somebody else out here. That's, you know, and I'm not mean. I'm just like, this is what's going to happen. This is my show. I'm running it. (laughs) This is my house. Yeah. Either you perform and I've gotten a lot done like that, but it takes me a minute to get to there because I want to believe in people and, and expect them to come and do the things that they're supposed to do and not treat me like I don't know anything. But he said that to me and I was like, my dad's not going coming anywhere. You can explain it to me. And he did. And I got it done and I moved on. I was kind of mad about it for a while, you know, but I see your face. I'm kind of mad right now. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of got me a little flustered. <laughs> so those are two instances that like that have happened just in terms of like a revolving dad. I feel like, like yeah. <laughs> it's, I've, I've also had like the contractor or the foreman on a job be there and the workers treat me one way. And then when they leave, they treat me another. They flip. Interesting. What, in what way? Point. Like what happens? How do they treat you? And in- they either just don't even listen to me at all. You know, I can say, uh, you're, putting the floor wrong it's supposed to go the opposite way and they just said well that's the way we're supposed to, that's the way he said to do it and I'm like but you're gonna have to take it up I'm telling you that so if someone else it, is around would, they they treat you a certain way yes so and they oh right. and they would have listened to me if there was a higher up there or even he can oh. be 50 yards down the house you know I mean on the other side but if He's there. They would have listened to me. But if they leave, they said, no, nope, we don't take orders from you. We or we work for I him. see. You know, that kind of. Uh, I've, Just I've the hierarchy in their own business. Mm-hmm. They don't kind of like communicate directly right. with the homeowner. And I have had yeah. to go back to stop what I'm doing, call the contractor Ugh. or the form, tell him they're doing it wrong. Then, then he has to call. Yeah. That particular contractor finally said, okay, guys, he got them all together and he said, this is what we're going to do. He wrote my phone number on the wall, said, if you have any, my name, <laughs> everyone will call her then. Number, yeah. On the wall in the so called what was going to be the living room and said that I lived across the street, down the street, right across. Yeah. If they needed and anything. If they needed anything, he had to come from 40 minutes away. If I needed anything, any questions they had to call me. I can imagine too, though, like I think about us like designing for people's homes and them not trusting the process and them having a, like, you know, kind of getting ahead of the, of the project and like saying something to a tradesman that's there or even Mm -hmm. us that was designing and just like, wait, like, or they just, are they're, they're supposed to talk to their boss. Like that, that I can, I can see being, somewhat acceptable like no I need to yeah this is but this is what I was told you know when he needs it um, a direction from his boss that that I can see dismissing you because they need to talk to your husband yeah is unacceptable well I wasn't that time what it was was they were putting uh tile the uh, the uh travertine Travertine? tile down in your bedroom at the house and the guest bedroom oh that was supposed to be carpet carpet. (gasps) oh and I'm like what, this yeah you're not supposed to do that this is not supposed to be tiled which is a lot more expensive and I said you're not supposed to do it in here it's not in the bid and he said this is what we were told to do we're, we're doing it I'm like whatever okay and so they went ahead and did it and so when the contractor got there he said they weren't why didn't you tell him I said I did tell him they said you told him to do that oh and now it's just so what frustrating. Building's so frustrating sometimes. He said, well, am I going to have enough floor to finish the rest of the house? I don't know. know. <laughs> Beats me. You'll find out. <laughs> You're in charge. <laughs> oh, so my God. He, I had to buy a little bit more floor, but it was okay. For a box of floor, I got travertine and I didn't in have all, to In the whole house. It's true. And it's true. So, hey, came out ahead. I came out ahead. So I share my renovation projects online through my social media at Exo McKenna and my website, exomckenna.com. And I am so excited to relaunch my new website later this year, which I am building on Squarespace. And Squarespace is an online platform where you can design a beautiful website to showcase your business, 
share your ideas and content through blogging and or sell anything, products, the content you create, and even your time. I love that Squarespace is so easy to use so that I can design my website myself, allowing me to get creative with how it looks and how I wanna share projects. I absolutely love sharing things through video. So the Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share videos to share your message and products in a really special way. If you're wanting to blog, Squarespace has really easy to use blogging tools to share photos, videos, and recommendations in whatever way works for you. So your website can be really incredibly custom. You can also see how visitors are using your website, like what pages or blog posts are getting visited more often so that you can make even more content or products based on what people are really resonating with. So check out squarespace.com XO for a free trial and start building your website. And then when you're ready to launch, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Because I'm always shopping online for a variety of things, home decor, project supplies, clothing, makeup, and I love a good deal. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. So when you find something online and you go to checkout, the Honey button will appear and all you have to do is click apply coupons. And within a few seconds, if Honey finds a working coupon, you save. It's actually getting a bit warmer here in LA and I was just ordering some outfits to wear for summer from some of my favorite brands. And within seconds, Honey found coupons for both websites I was shopping on and I saved almost $40 with just a click of a button. And I didn't even know those brands offered coupons. Honey doesn't just work on desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Getting Honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor when shopping online. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash DIY. That's joinhoney.com slash DIY. So I think I think more often like that was an instance with just like, you know, like specific salesmen or, or people yeah. working on specific projects. But let's let's talk about the one that comes up to mind like is the hardware store thing. I obviously <laughs> it's I call the hardware store my second home. I'm in there all the time, you know, like even we went yesterday, I had to go pick up material. Mom and I were both in there. Dad didn't even go in the hardware store. No, It was me and you, no. you know, so we're in there picking up our materials. Um, and I started my projects online doing reno like little small DIY projects with very limited tool knowledge, really being, you know, I still feel like I'm, I'm a learn every day and I'm somewhat of an amateur kind of DIYer, but then it was even more so uh, power tools really scared me. I didn't have as much knowledge as I do now. So I would go in there kind of just like and walk around and stare at things. I would look at things. I'm like, oh, I wonder what this does. I wonder what that does. I want to, you know, and just kind of like get my bearings because it was interesting to me to use all of these tools and what could things do and how did people build houses. And there's been so many instances where I'm in the hardware store and they just treat me like I'm not supposed to be there. Like clearly. I stumbled into the wrong store. Like when you, when you went in a dress? No, don't ever go to the hardware <laughs> store in a dress. Look, I was coming back. I, I dress cute some days, you know? And I've learned how to better help, like to help avoid the, the workers there or even men. Do you remember? You couldn't even believe I was kind of mean to him. Remember we were in the aisle for the tools and a guy kept giving me advice on things? He's oh, like, what yeah. are you building? I was like, I'm good. I'm nothing. Don't talk to me. What are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, what did he do? She you? was like, why were you so mean to him? And I was like, oh, because it's just like all the time. I have this like really across my forehead. I used to think it said, help me, please. Like, because it just like, I attract these people to just come up and spill their advice. I'm like, you don't even know what I'm working on. You have no idea what I'm building. Oh, that was, he started telling you how to do something. Yes, was, but why? I don't even know what he was tell, talking about. I don't know. About. I know it wasn't even pertinent to what you were trying to do and no. he started telling you about so, yeah I remember that and we're a lot of times you're on a time crunch yeah you I'm in it. there and I'm like grabbing yeah. what I need and I'm getting out and so I learned the hard way and went into a hardware store in a dress 
short cute dress. I was coming from something else and I needed, I was like, oh, I'm in this town. I need to go and grab this X, Y, and Z. I'm going to grab it really quick and leave. Oh my God. From the stairs of people being like, what is this girl doing in here in a dress? It wasn't like a long, it wasn't a ball gown. Yeah. It was just like my my floral dress that I wear all the time. The short yeah. one. It was like cute. So I'm grabbing my materials. I'm it's obviously really awkward because I'm pushing wood on those big rollies in a dress. I get it. I get that it looked weird. <laughs> but the amount of comments that I got and the amount of people trying to help me, I couldn't go down the aisle without it happening. And I just kind of gave off this I'm clearly in the wrong place. I don't know what I'm doing. I need help, you know, and where help is nice, like to for a worker there to offer like, oh, do you need any help? And I say, no, that's nice. You know, they're trying to be helpful. They're working there. They're they're asking everybody when it's customers. (laughs) I it falls into (laughs) a realm of like, really? (laughs) No, I don't need help. So there was this one situation that comes to mind. Um, I needed a four by eight sheet of plywood and I wasn't dressed like in my work clothes, but now I always go in my work clothes. Like the worst look I could have going into a hardware store, the better. If I could have paint on my face, the better. I just get treated more seriously, right? And so I'm in the hardware store. I'm not dressed in my work clothes. I'm just like dressed in like jeans jeans and a nicer shirt or whatever. And I needed a piece of, not a nice shirt actually. I needed a piece of four by eight plywood. But at the time we were in California in our apartment and my car doesn't fit four by eight sheets. I don't have a truck that I could put it in. So I brought my saw with me so that I could cut it in the parking lot. Or I was, I usually have them cut it if I need to. Like, can you just like slice it down the middle? It'll fit in my car and I can use them pieces. So I get a worker to come over and I'm like, hey, like it was up high, the one I needed. Um, it was more of a finished plywood because I was working on my co- my my closet and I needed it sanded. So I, I asked somebody to come over and I was like, I need a piece of that plywood, but it's up too high. Would you be able to get it down for me? And he was like, what are you building? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm working on a, a project for my closet. And he was like, well, uh, do you, do you know what that's used for? And I was like, oh my God, here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, I have used it before. I need, I need the sanded one. Um, I don't want to sand it. Like that's what, can you get the sand? Can you get it down? You know? And so he's like, well, I don't want to get it down if you're not going to buy it. So I kind of want to help, like help you figure out what you're doing with it. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, for seriously, like I've used it before and I'm trying to be nice at this point because I'm like, oh my God, I really need him to get it down. Like I'm again on a time crunch trying to get back to do a project for content, for a video. I don't have time for this guy to doubt me. And so he lo- he was like, do you know how much it is? And I'm like, are you saying that I can't afford this piece of plywood? It was all around horrible to a point where I was like, never mind. I'm going to go get someone else that can help me. And he's like, I didn't mean to offend you. I was like, well, that's what well, you kept doing it. I'm so confused. <laughs> like it, it was just so bizarre. I'm like all fired up. <laughs> like, I just don't, I don't get it. Like why there was so much doubt on me. I gave no reason for doubt. I'm a paying customer. I've I'm sorry that what well, he didn't want to get it down. He didn't want to get it down. Well, he might not have minded getting it down. He probably didn't want to put it back up. Well, I know. Why would he need to get it? Like, I I'm anyways, I've had those instances in the hardware store a lot to where people need feel the need to help me or underestimate me. Like even when I need wood cut there because it wouldn't fit in my car, I've avoided that at all costs. Now I just bring my saw with me and I cut it in the parking lot. Like that's so sad, but I do. Yeah. I just, I, I'm just going to avoid it if I can. I don't wear dresses. And I've now recently started putting my earphones in. That's, I'm doing everything that I can to protect myself, like my own sanity because so I do get frustrated I don't even hear them I'm like and they're not even on you guys they're not even oh, playing no. anything I just have my earphones in I'm like kind of like you know I'm bobbing with the imaginary music <laughs> looking at the aisle picking what you I need leave. if well mom <laughs> what do you want me to do I don't know so don't I'm know. so hot talking about this well it keeps you from getting mad I guess it keeps me it keeps all the way around exactly it yeah. keeps my mental state really positive it I don't get frustrated or feel like someone's doubting my ability I just have my imaginary 
music playing. I'm picking what I need. People have asked, like, oh, do you need any help? I ignore them. I just have to, you know what I mean? Because like I have earphones in and like I'll turn and I'll like bob and I didn't, I was like, I'll smile and I'll keep walking. (laughs) Yeah. It works great. They think I didn't hear them. I don't get mad. It works really well for me. So if you've ever had experiences in the hardware store, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, you know what I mean? But do you know when I don't ever get asked if I need help? Do you know when? When? When Romeo's with me. Oh, yeah. And that just royally pisses me off. I'm like, really? You then, oh no, exactly. Yeah. Then you can't find anyone to help you. And I'm like, I just need someone to take this down. You know, you can't I'm, find anyone. Anyways, I digress. They used to put little buzzers on the end of the aisle that you could, and it, she they would, should have that. The girl everywhere. would come. The girl would come on and say, "Customer needs help in the." Amazing that it's something. a woman. But now um, you can't. You can't find now you can't find anybody i don't think they're in there anymore (sighs) okay you gotta you gotta talk for a minute because i need (laughs) i need to decompress you know it's funny you talked about money it's whether they want to get it down or not i went to a uh store a flooring store a nice flooring store one time and i had a lady work there that had a girl actually that had helped me previously on other houses and so she knew me and I wanted a budget floor because we, all, you know, we've always had big labs, big dogs. Oh, yeah. And I wanted a porcelain floor. Didn't really matter. It was going in their dog room. We were making a dog room to yeah. off air-conditioned dog a room. A really, but like, budget-friendly, low, budget friendly, yeah. Something that nice, somebody, but not, like, super high quality, like, not high quality. I didn't care. I just something white, cream, beige. For sure. Tan. It didn't really matter. Uh, but I wanted it to go up the wall. To, yeah. you know, because they... To protect them, yeah, yeah because they chew they, on the wall, especially with their puppy. And they rub on the wall and stuff. And anyway, I could hose it all down. And so I wanted a real budget. And she had called and said that there was... Uh, somebody didn't take it or there was an overage or something and uh, to come look at it. And so I said, great. So I drove into San Antonio, went and looked at it and to look at it. And she wasn't there for some reason. And I went in and I wanted the budget for it. And... I kept telling them that's what I wanted. I couldn't get to the budget floor because I was in a dress. You can't pre, you know, what? they wanted to sell me. It was the people on the floor oh, wanted to sell it me. It had the, the opposite. opposite. Oh, it's I like going to a to flea marker them. with designer goods on. I, know. <laughs> I kept trying to get to the, to the budget, you know, dollar a foot, dollar a yard, however budget it was. I kept trying to get to the, but I said, no, I don't want you that. You really got to look the part sometimes I when you so. really dressing I has a huge my mind but i had to it puts a whole new la- a yeah. whole new level of 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 I thought know. into your wardrobe nowadays it's I like know. really well i had to tell him look i'm not pay- i'm not this is not what i want i want the bucket budget bucket budget what do you call when you get the back room bucket budget you want the clearance aisle you yes. want the you want the yes. leftover getting rid of it discounted yeah. yeah yeah and i knew how much i needed <laughs> you know i i wanted the he finally took me to the back room in the back warehouse and there it was and i said i'll take that it's true you really got to dress it don't go to the hardware store yeah, and address dress the part dress the part yeah um anyway that wasn't that was kind of off the wall is there but. something else that happened at the house that like ju- like with contractors just underestimating you or just dismissing you well i know after you know if you when you're doing stuff and you're remodeling your house and things like that and you want to get bids and i yeah. always go out my husband doesn't like to get the bids talk to the people do that initial work he just wants the bids tell me how much it's gonna yeah. be can you work with him did you did you like him let's do it he wants to get four or five bids and then pick the best one and the problem with that is is that sometimes and i face this more than once they want me to describe the job to them but they want to discuss the money with my husband Interesting. So they think that they've even asked the for man my has. Email. Oh, I know. That's so wrong. We'll email your Do they not know who is. runs every this whole show? Mom, like that blows my mind. I know. They've asked for my husband. In one instance, he asked for my husband's email. 
so they just think that he bed. makes all the money. Yeah, like you wouldn't have any say in anything financial. I I feel like it just comes down to like I don't know an old school society yeah. way of thinking and. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Times that have definitely mean- changed. So I'm, I am glad that it, it is better now. Um, you know, some of the instances here, so I've obviously dealt with one particular contractor, but I did a cost plus basis. So I actually dealt with each subcontractor individually and they were all different. You know what I mean? They're all going to be different, all coming from different places. So between different plumbers, different electricians, different uh, f- uh, really just one set of framers, um, you know, different people coming in and out of the property. I kind of had to introduce myself to everyone. Got it. You know, I think that what they all had in common, um, they were all very nice to me, right? Because I was the only one here. It's not like there's yeah. somebody else to talk to. So all the conversations were geared towards me. Of course, my contractor probably preface, you'll meet her do you know what I mean? Like it was all mm-hmm. prefaced that I was going to be a woman when you got here or whatever. Yeah. What Positive. I also, when I'm working in my work clothes, I look like I'm about 12 years old. <laughs> yes. That, I've had that. My age mm-hmm. has played a very, or the way, the, my age that I look yeah. gets definitely is a, hit, is a negative hit on me. Like I feel like I look so much younger than I am. I'm 34. And this is all funded by me. Like, like th- this is, this is a project for, I don't know. Like, I feel like my age has, has really, yeah, had, I got so that too. when they would come, I wasn't taken seriously, you know? So all very nice, not, and not, all, not from all of them. And some of them were amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what they all had in common was in the beginning, they just were kind of nice. They had to talk to me in whatever. It wasn't until they, they were here working they were seeing me here working, lifting, sawing, cutting, moving, rebuilding, demoing. When they saw me working like side by side with them on different projects, all of them said, whoa. Like they were all very impressed. Respect. For, yeah, yeah. They had a lot more respect for me because they just never, and they would say over and over, they never have seen, they've never been on site and seen like, I guess, a woman or a 12 year old girl (laughs) just do these projects and what I was able to do and that I wasn't afraid of power tools and that I really was using all of these tools. It's just not something that's very common. So that just played into a a lot, but I had so much, they had so much respect for me after, which made me really proud, you know, Mm -hmm. that they stopped asking me if I needed help. They always said like, we're here if you need anything, like if you need like help lifting something Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, But none of them, underestimated me anymore you know and that felt really really good so showing is definitely better than just assuming that they're gonna know that you're you know whatever but I digress but there was a a lot of those those instances um did you come up with them well that's that's like when I built the first house at 23 they were like did they underestimate you yeah yeah they just you're just too young to be doing this and yeah you know but and I do, yeah, I mean, I, I know that not like knowledge comes with age and, and experience, you know, with, so with more time, you have more experience that it, it, that's inevitable. You know what I mean? Not to say that I didn't know a lot at 23 or you didn't know a lot at 23, maybe more than the average 23 year old. But our personality is we'll just dive in and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Never hesitate on just What's like the worst that can happen. What it literally, what is the worst that can yeah. happen? We're yeah. safe about it. Like even with me, we were talking about this yesterday, like safe with power tools. And mm-hmm. I have not, besides the tape measure snapping back on my hand <laughs> and the occasional like little nick here and there, I have knock on wood, have yes. not hurt myself in a big way with all the projects that I do, all the tools that I use all the safety measures that I've taken off of my power tools. Shame on you. I am my daughter's child. My daughter's child. child. I am my my dad's child. Yes, y'all do that. We do. We both do that because they're just in the way. At least you don't don't rev them up. No. He he revs them up. No, he actually really hurts himself. I actually don't. So another thing that that happened during uh, the renovation or ways that I've learned to cope with it. You know, like it's inevitable. Like some people may show up um, and – not underestimate me or not think that I'm 12 years old, but some people may show up and, you know, 
greatly do it. Like it's an obstacle that I constantly have to overcome. And I've learned tricks and things that I can do to like better help me position myself because at the end of the day, it's about getting the work done and getting the best possible price. That's it. You know, we don't have to be friends. We don't have to go to lunch together. (laughs) This is not like, you're not going to be part of the family. It's a job that needs to be done. So when they come in for a meeting or something like that, I always let them lead. I let them say they clearly want to talk about their stuff and I need to know like what they think needs to be done. They're also not the only one I'm going to talk to. So getting bids and things is so important in meeting with multiple people because then you have more knowledge on how much something's going to cost. Mm -hmm. I'm also not as uh, bid heavy as mom gets. Mom gets lots of bids on all of her projects because she, you know, she likes to know it. I feel more time constraint. I feel like I feel Mm -hmm. more, I just want it done. You know, so I pick one that I'm comfortable with. I'm like, okay, this of the three I've got, of the three people that came out, they're all about the same. Which one did I like the best? Which one had the best price? And I pick it and I move on and say la vie. Like, it's like, I don't have time to meet with like five other people. You know what I mean? Um, So I ride that, that line. But when they come, I just let them talk. I let them go through it and spiel. I never tell them my budget. Never. I've learned from mom. Never tell them how much money I'm willing to spend on something. I, when they tell me the amount, I always gasp. It doesn't matter what price yeah. it is. It could be like, this can't, like, no, I, you know, not all the time, but like when it's reasonable, probably I won't. But if they're like, oh, you know, when we wanted to move back the house. Yeah. No, that was a real <laughs> gasp. <laughs> That was when real. he said eight thousand dollars, <laughs> Mom and I both went, "Oh my gosh!" Well, we had moved, we had used him to move a cabin that we had, and it was twenty five hundred dollars yeah. to move it a lot further than you wanted to move. This yeah, house. we went into thinking that, and that was this. His, we thought it was the same guy, but it was his father. Yeah, he said, we, from well, the same company that they actually had moved something prior a few years prior. It was around 2500 So going into it, we kind of anticipated, yes, inflation. It Maybe it will be, let's even call it double. It's at 5000 No, it was going to yeah. be 8000 And this house was on pier and beam. We had demoed everything off. Like there was... Easy. Ma- and maybe that is totally what it costs. But yeah. I feel like it's only, you know, it's all in what you value. It wasn't valuable. We for- should have had a hint because every time somebody we said we're going to move it back, they went, oh, you're going to move it back. People would go, oh. They would gonna- be shocked. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's really not that expensive. What do you oh, mean? That, that, yeah. We know why they were it's true. gasping. <laughs> we should, should true. <laughs> not to say that I gasp as an offensive thing. Like, I feel like it could borderline be offensive like when someone says of a trade mom's like no when when someone as a trade you know like does quality work and they say what they're offered you know coming from a design background and constantly being undervalued for what they're what we're worth you know from like graphic design and I feel like no one's ever really valued like a like to pay for a logo or a website. So coming from that background, I'm a little little more hesitant to be like gasp and in awe at someone's price, you know, but I'm genuinely react how I feel. If it's like $8,000, I did. It was like, it was like, a knee jerk reaction was like, Oh my God. Oh, we're really like, no, we need to go back to the drawing board. Like, I don't think that that's going to be possible. Like that's, that's yeah. crazy, you know? So that has helped me. Um, I think I learned that from you because you always do. Even in flea markets. <laughs> like, ah, give me $10 and I go, I don't. Oh. And someone, someone will be like, oh, like, oh, that tw- stool. I was like, how much is it? They'll be like, oh, 20 bucks. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> I go it's all in oh. what I I look at it. If I value it for $20, I pay it. Yeah. Even if they probably found it on the street and they were making like a yeah. 2,000% markup or whatever. But yeah. <sighs> well, that's okay. They live for people like you. So that it, they do. Yeah. And Romeo loves when people like me come down the aisle yeah. because they won't haggle. They yeah. just pay you. He mm-hmm. loves me. 
Summer is officially here and we've got so many fun things coming up to do this summer. We've got weddings to attend, days by the pool and beach days, which is so fun, but we're gonna be so busy. And with our busy schedules, we love having fresh meals in the fridge from HelloFresh and now from EveryPlate. EveryPlate is America's best value meal kit offering 26 tasty and affordable recipes to choose from every week. Their meals are 25% cheaper than grocery shopping and 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal, putting the money that we save on meals towards our fun summer plans. Meals are delivered straight to our door and are pre-portioned so it takes the guesswork out of what to have for dinner tonight, saves us on a trip to the grocery store, and we can even order meals that can be ready in 15 minutes or less. Get $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code XO49. That's just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code XO49. Thank you to Everyplate for sponsoring this episode. So I've, I've learned to let them talk, to just go through it, get multiple bids, um, and just don't, sh- don't overshare. I feel like that's, I, I just don't go too far into the project that like I'm working or whatever. Like just, I just don't overshare anything. Always ask for their ideas because they have ideas that you may not even have thought of. Yeah. And it's a learning a experience meeting with yeah. contractors to like know what's, what you're going to go through for like sure. We're thinking about putting in the pool. I've got four or five people coming, but I'm going to go, what do you think? And I may take from all of them different ideas. So yeah, they put in pools so they know what to, what to do. Yeah. Conversations are always good. I love having conversations. Mm -hmm. So I feel like just like with the hardware store, you know, knowing like those little things that I've developed to like, just eliminate the frustration behind being underestimated or whatever, like having my headphones in, not going, not dress the part, like going in my paint clothes, just like, like that I'm, I belong there really helps just remedy the situation. And then as far as like being on site, have you done anything that's like helped you to like, I don't know, just kind of eliminate the, that weird, that weirdness, well, like that, oh, they're not going to talk oh, to yeah. you. you. You can eliminate it from the get go. Okay. You start out right. Like when we like say for instance, so the, first impressions first are going to be in, are big. Every, okay. Yes. Like the pool, we've got contractors coming tomorrow to look at this, the area, the land, how it drops off. And so what I did was I, to jump ahead, I put in the call to them. I told them I was going to send them a packet. It's a picture of the back of the house, the overhead of the house, the um, uh, survey of the house, how the land slopes down. Yeah. A mock-up that you and I did years ago when I was thinking about doing, you did it for me, uh, of the pool that I would like. It's just a drawing, Mm. a computer drawing of the pool that I think I want. And just some aspects and with my name at the top with my phone number. Okay. Th- that's such a good thing. Like the more prepared, mm-hmm. I feel like we have to over prepare mm-hmm. so that we can show that, no, we know what's going on. Yeah. This is, this is what I want. I'm really cl- like, be really clear about what you want and what needs to be done. I did that in this house too, in a similar way where I had a lit, like I went with a contractor and I had a pamphlet. I want to do these projects. I want you to do from, you know, foundation to drywall and that's it, you know, and like each step I want to be cost plus, I want to be knowledgeable about like, I knew more about what I wanted. So if you go pr- more prepared you are, the more serious they're going to take you. It's not like me. I can imagine me being like the house and like having a contractor come over and be like, okay, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. I just want to like yeah. build on to it. No. Like you no. have to really do the work ahead of time to be taken seriously. You have to really go through the motions and have tangible things that they right. could either look at or take away. Uh, and you're right. That and will definitely even- eliminate the... Yeah, we need to talk to somebody else or talk to your husband. In one case, I haven't even talked to the guy. He's coming tomorrow. I have an appointment. But with the other two or three, I've sent them the packet. They've got, they know what I want, uh, about what I want. They can do their work ahead of time to be able to impress me. Oh, yeah. So, oh, I. Yeah. And my husband has never been mentioned. 
it's they have my name, my phone number, my packet. So that you're running the show. Like um, there's no confusion about like running yes. running the show. Like now, the, your dad will be there, but yeah. he'll be there, but it'll be my show. And when you start out that way, then they you just start out good. You start out on Yeah. Knows where I don't at. I think that we go into some situations assuming that I don't know, maybe we were going to take like that first situation. Like that could have that could couldn't have been avoidable. Like that first window situation. He was right. coming, he was dealing with your contractor. Like the the dismissive nature in him was yes. just like that's just pathetic that and like That was a defense on his. Part. Yeah, like that's just so sad. But in situations where you are starting a new project, being more prepared and starting from the get go with like communication, if you are going to be handling the project, right. you know, like there has been instances to like where people like Romeo has been here and people have come to work and they will just address him. Um, and <laughs> so Romeo's funny because he'll be like, oh, you got to talk to her. <laughs> I don't, He's I don't know. Secure. Oh yeah. He like, this is my, this is my thing. And he goes, he doesn't even pretend to know what's going on. He's like, I don't know. You're going to have to talk to her. I I have no idea. That's how your dad does. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's just like no big deal. And then some like workers, like my plumber is so amazing. Like the final one that we got, Mm -hmm. he's so amazing. He's so, he's like so proud. I feel like of me, like he like comes and he's just like, can't wait to see what I accomplished and did. He even explains some things to me. So I learn like what he's doing, you know, and like little things. And he's just in in a way you could see like that tradesman could like not tell me his his kind of quote unquote trade secrets so that I don't just do things on my own. I have never once wanted to just do it on my own instead of calling him out here. It has given him his value, you know, because I know it's going to be done right. I know he he's so nice to just be around and like and how great to go through life like that. Yes. Of and it's just yeah. like a great relationship and when you know, when we just all work together, it's just like so much better. So I hope we didn't <laughs> just sit here for an hour and just like talk bad. But hey, it's just things that we've had to cope with. It's things reality. that we, we it's reality, things that we've really had to deal with being in this industry on the construction side, on the building side that has been challenging to overcome. And the only thing that we've come up with and why they're treating us that way is that we're women. And maybe that I may look like 12 years old. I That one, I haven't quite put my name on it. Even yeah. you called me like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She looks like she's 12. And I'm like, um. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I just, I do. Like I have my hair up in a ponytail. I have a t-shirt on and shorts and my tennis shoes. Yeah. And hey, keep calling me 12. Because if I can look 12 at 34, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, thank you. Like when I get carded for something or whatever, oh. I get so excited. I'm like, thank you. Oh, that's that's yeah. the sign that you're getting old. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this is video. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, please comment. Not that we want the comment section to become like a bashing session for how we've been treated, but <laughs> you know, like I hope we, we oh. love to work in that. We love men contractors that do a great job that we like to work beside them. We do. Oh, yeah. We do. Yeah. And I love it. quality. I, hey, and I never for a second will say that I can outlift or have an upper no. body strength that mm-hmm. that they have. Like I watch them lift things like the drywall sheets and oh. doing things over their head. And even my dad, like sometimes I just need him to do things mm-hmm. because the, the tw- or Romeo, yeah. I need their force and their, their yeah, trajectory. Don't I, I don't have, I will mm-hmm. never have the upper body strength. And that's okay for me. If I, I can admit that I can't do something, so we do like them in that sense. They can stick around for that. Um, no, it has been overall a really good experience. And with every project or every tradesman that you work with, you'll learn a little more. I've just had to develop some some coping, coping for mechanisms. That we have trouble with. There's five that uh, really to- respect us. hundred percent, even yeah. more so now. Like you know, it's amazing. I have said this line a little too many times, though about oh like when people say like oh you sure you know what you're doing I was like well I am renovating a house with my own two hands that's a hundred years old so yeah I think I have I think I know a thing or two yeah (laughs) that shuts it down really quick look look me up and subscribe yeah like (laughs) 
If you want to check it out, I've been sharing the whole process. You know what I mean? I think through this process of sharing my projects online and sharing that I am a a woman in more of a male dominated job, I feel like um, I've shown and by consequence, and I didn't know that this was going to happen, but I've also inspired you guys and other people, other women to do work like this. And I know it was a, a big thing for me to overcome getting more comfortable with power tools and because I, I just didn't see any other women using them. I didn't see people like me. Like it wasn't like, you know, the the, sh- the resistance that you got from the hardware store is like you almost shouldn't be there. And mm. then to do something and my mom telling me, it's okay if you cut off your finger, just put it on ice. And, we'll t- <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to cut off my finger. Mom. It's not okay. I didn't say it was okay. But she was just preparing me. She was letting me do it, but preparing me if the worst happened. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. Uh, so I've since inspired, I feel like that's been a huge motivator for me to keep going and keep sharing my projects is because it's an inspiring thing. You know, like you can take charge and like do your own projects um, without help from anyone, you know, when you, and but if you need help, you can ask and just kind of writing the balance and developing coping mechanisms and things that you do when you go to the hardware store to avoid you getting stressed out. I, yeah. It really works for me. Power tools are not just for men's hands. They work. No. Yeah, they work. I, and I don't claim to know what they're called. I don't want to know what they're called. I don't need to know what they're called. I know what they do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't. Yes. I need to know what they build. I don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, so I hope that this, I don't know what, inspired you, uh, gave you some tips and tools to use when you're building your own house or renovating or going even just taking a trip to the hardware store share with us what you've um experienced we would love to hear even though we don't want the comment section to be um you know just a bashing ground for people that we've worked with but i think knowledge like i I always say this knowledge is power coming prepared to meet with with tradesmen really just like sets the right stage Mm -hmm. to work together and that's huge that can go a suit that will go the length of the way and really take your whole project and get you the home that you dreamed of, you know, and, and even with your, your projects that you're working on. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know what you want to hear next. It might start getting a little bit too hot to sit by the fire during the summertime, but it is nice for now. Um, and we will see you guys in two weeks for another episode. Let us know what you want to hear. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.